Hello, in this video we'll be considering a couple of financing options for a project we've already decided to do. Suppose you've already done your NPV analysis, assuming that you're going to borrow the money and buy the asset involved in the project. We are now asking the question, could we improve the NPV of that project by leasing as opposed to buying the asset? It's important to note that we've already decided to go ahead with the project, so the actual operational cash flows the project generates is not relevant here. We're only considering the incremental cash flows of comparing leasing versus buying the asset. You need to read the question to find out exactly what the differences are between leasing and buying in the jurisdiction of the question. Typically, it will include the following. If you lease the asset, you pay rentals. These rental payments are incremental to the leasing option, as is the fact that you will receive a tax deduction when paying them. They will be allowable for corporation tax purposes. If you lease the asset, you won't have to pay the initial cost of buying it, but you will also lose the scrap proceeds as you won't have an asset to sell at the end of the lease. Finally, if you lease the asset, you won't own it, so it's unlikely you'll be able to claim capital allowances. Let's work through a question to see how we tackle the situation. Suppose we're considering borrowing at an after-tax cost of 10% to buy an asset at a cost of $10,000 for a three-year project. At the end of the three years, the asset will have a scrap value of $4,000. 25% writing down allowances are available on a reducing balance basis with a balancing allowance or balancing charge for the final year. Alternatively, you could lease the asset at a cost of $2,600 a year payable at the end of the year. This $2,600 is tax deductible. Corporation taxes payable at a rate of 30% per annum, payable in the same year as the cash flows that are being taxed. Should the company lease or buy the asset? There are two alternative approaches to dealing with a question like this. You could prepare two NPV tables, one for leasing and one for buying, and compare the two to see which is cheapest. Alternatively, you can prepare one table, which in one go compares leasing as opposed to buying. We'll have a look at both methods here. Generally, either are acceptable in the exam. First of all, let's have a look at the two-table approach. We'll start off by putting together an NPV table showing the cost of buying the asset. Time across the top. Initial cost scrap value, writing down allowances, we'll come back to this, net cash flow, discount factors at the after-tax cost of borrowing, learn this, to give us net present value. We calculate the value of the tax saved as a result of claiming writing down allowances in exactly the same way as we've seen already. Headings, the first writing down allowance, the second writing down allowance, and the balancing allowance in the final year. Now, let's get that into the NPV table for the borrow and purchase option. Let's now add up, multiply by the discount factor to give us the present values. If we add up the present values, we get a cost of, so negative, $5,483. Firstly, don't be put off by the fact that this is negative. We're only considering the cost of ownership. Secondly, you'll notice we don't put the loan that we take out as a cash inflow. We don't put the loan repayment as a cash outflow, and we don't even put the interest cost as a cash outflow. This is because it's all accounted for in the discount factor. That 10% represents the cost of financing this asset. 
Let's now have a look at the relevant cash flows associated with leasing the asset. Headings, rental costs, tax saving on the rental cost, add up the relevant cash flows, multiply by the discount factor, this is still the post-tax cost of borrowing of 10%, learn this, and add up the present value to work out the net present cost of the leasing alternative. So, the net present cost associated with buying the asset was $5,483. The net present cost associated with leasing the asset was $4,524. Leasing is therefore $5,483 less $4,524 equals $959 cheaper. All else being equal, we should therefore lease the asset. As mentioned earlier, this can be done through one table. We'll construct the table from the point of view of saying if we lease as opposed to buy the asset, let's set up the pro forma first. If we lease as opposed to buy, then we will save the initial outlay, lose the scrap proceeds, lose the capital allowances, pay annual rentals and receive a tax deduction for doing so. We then add up all the relevant cash flows and multiply by the discount factor to give us present values, which we then add up to give us the NPV of leasing as opposed to buying. You'll notice that the answer is the same as before. Preparing a table that asks should we lease as opposed to buy has a positive NPV of $959, meaning that leasing as opposed to buying is a good thing to do. It is worth considering how you could possibly be better off to lease as opposed to buy, when presumably the company that leases you the asset is also making some money. There are several possible reasons for this. The leasing company may buy in bulk and therefore be able to buy the assets at a discount. The leasing company may have access to cheaper finance, for example if it's a bank. The leasing company may be prepared to take a small loss on the lease itself to encourage the sale to happen in the first place. Finally, sometimes leasing an asset may be the only way a business can finance the acquisition. For example, borrowing may not be possible if it has little to offer by way of security. In this video, we've compared leasing versus buying as two financing alternatives. Remember that the decision to go ahead with the project has already taken place, so there's no need to bring in the project cash flows we're only considering how the cash flows change if we were to lease as opposed to buy.